In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of us, brothers and sisters, have received Christmas gifts that we've never used? How many of us have received gifts that we never really asked for, or we had no choice in receiving them? Or how many of us have received gifts where we recognize the value, something very precious to us, something we've wanted very much, but after we've received it, we've neglected it, we've left it aside, we've never really made use of it. If that's the case, it's probably an exercise machine. This is the sort of thing that we neglect. But there are too many things like this. Certainly we see with children who in North America receive many more gifts than they can possibly use, and then some get neglected. But it's not just children, it's adults as well. A gift that is left unused adds nothing to our life. An exercise machine that is not taken out of the box does not help us become more physically fit. These days following the baptism of the Lord, the theophany, the appearance of God, we mark the baptism of Christ that gave baptism to us, and that is the gift of the Christian faith. Baptism gives us the Christian faith. We come into the church through baptism. We may not have sought baptism. We may not have looked for that gift if we were baptized as children. In some cases, it is a gift that we sought, maybe with all our hearts, if we received it as adults. It's, it's still a gift that enables us to become holy and restore the likeness of God in us if only we don't neglect it. St. Athanasius says that Christ comes down from heaven to bring us the heavenly gifts. That's what he does in the incarnation. He comes down, becomes man, and thereby, through his whole life, his death and resurrection, he brings us gifts that used to be only in heaven. But he brings us these gifts to use. He doesn't bring us these gifts to just hold on to or admire or to say that we got the membership card in the church. He gives us these gifts to use. St. John Chrysostom says that these gifts are seen individually in the holy orders of the church, as we hear uh, delineated in the epistle reading today. But they're also for all the faithful. All the faithful receive holy gifts through baptism. And they are gifts to be used. St. John Chrysostom says, All faithful will eventually be mature in virtue. Because the alternative is not being in heaven. So if we are faithful and we use the gifts that we receive in holy baptism, we'll be in heaven and we will have received again the maturity, the spiritual maturity that we were made to have in the first place. If we neglect those gifts, though, we will not find ourselves in heaven. We will not find ourselves with spiritual maturity. We don't sort of get in under the wire into heaven. We will either be like the saints or we will not be there. This is what holiness is. Reacquiring what we were made to have in the first place. We should ask ourselves, are we on the road to this kind of holiness? We should ask ourselves, have we even unwrapped the gift of baptism? Baptism for many is like that gift we leave sitting under the Christmas tree. It looks really nice under the Christmas tree, and we have nostalgic memories of it from a long time ago. We remember the good old days, but it is useless to us if we leave it there. It doesn't make any difference in our lives. It doesn't change us. Membership in the church itself is useless if we don't make use of it. Orthodox Christians can feel encouraged by the fact that the Orthodox faith has the fullness of truth. But we can be deceived into thinking that just believing in the fullness of truth is going to be enough for us. That's just receiving the baptism of the Holy Church and then leaving it, as it were, under the spiritual Christmas tree, just leaving it as a marker in our lives. It's not enough. And this is the reason, brothers and sisters, that we see uh, Protestants and Roman Catholics who display a lot more holiness than Orthodox Christians because if 
the Protestants or the Catholics have 30% of the truth, let's say, but they're 100% faithful to it, and the Orthodox faith has 100% of the truth, but we're only 10% faithful to it, then they're three times ahead into the kingdom of heaven to us. We can neglect our faith. And too often we do that. Usually that starts at about 3 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. And then it goes throughout the week until late on a Saturday. And then we might pick it up again. That's a neglect of faith, brothers and sisters. That's a neglect of faith. A lack of remembrance of our faith at all times is a neglect of faith. We mark on every day of the year people who died for their confession of Christ. And on many days of the year we mark feast days. And on a few days of the year we mark high, you would call them high feast days. The great feast days of the Lord, like we had uh, this week with the Feast of Theophany, for which there were four people here. And the same is true with Vespers. Brothers and sisters, we have to decide if we're going to make the time to make the most of our holy baptism. It doesn't engage without our cooperation. The holy mysteries of Christ do not push themselves on us. They are, as that famous picture of Christ shows, knocking at the door, but the door only has a doorknob from the inside. And we must open it. We must engage it and use the holy mysteries of Christ and work with Christ so that we can become holy. St. Cyril of Alexandria says that the light Christ gives to us is the gospel. It shows the, word, the world the power of God that can change them and free them from anything that has hold on them. The power of the gospel allows us to see our life with new optimism and hope and energy and enthusiasm. And we get this from baptism. And the Holy Spirit, from, in, at, from the time of baptism, enters us to work inside of us, whereas before Holy Baptism, it, the Holy Spirit only works on the outside of us. The Holy Spirit works everywhere in the world, but He only works on the outside of us before Holy Baptism. Without our effort, however, the Holy Spirit will not work in us. The Holy Spirit will, in fact, depart from us. And that's what happens when we sin. The Holy Spirit departs from us. That's the reason that for grievous sins, we don't for Holy Communion because we have broken our communion with Christ. If there is effort, if there is effort to cultivate the power of the grace of the Holy Spirit that we receive in baptism, then there will be evidence of this Holy Spirit's activity in our lives. The Holy Spirit will work in us and help us to grow and to change. We will not be the same person. One of the evidences of this is that we will see our sins, we will be aware of them, so that when we come to confess our sins, we won't say, well, I haven't robbed a bank, but we will instead say, like the fathers say, I am the greatest among sinners, because we will see our sins. They're there anyway, they're there anyway, so that the light of Christ will illumine our hearts and we'll be able to see what's actually there. And we will see a change in ourselves. We will see the growth of patience. We will see the growth of forgiveness for other people, especially people against whom we've had grudges for a long time. We will have mercy on other people. We will have less anxiety. We will see our sins and be able to repent of them. And that repentance will take the form of actually turning away from our sins. We will love Christ more than we love our sins. This is the reason, brothers and sisters, too often when we come for confession, we confess the same sins again and again, because we really still love our sins. And if those sins are grievous, then we have a serious problem, because we are chasing the Holy Spirit away from us, and the Holy Spirit is not at work in us. If we have these evidences working in us from the time of our baptism, this means that the gift of baptism is being used by us. It is being put into working order and not neglected. And this is what is necessary for the salvation of our souls, brothers and sisters, not simply to have membership in the church, not simply to wear a cross, 
not simply to cross ourselves or to confess the true faith. We must, if we are to be changed, put the grace and power of God that we receive in baptism to work in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace is baptized.